Today in the Gospel reading, we read about three people who came to the Lord, and also about another group of people who refused to come to the Lord. And you can see from that that over the last few weeks we've been having a similar sort of theme week by week. So let's think first of all about the first two who came to the Lord. They were blind. They couldn't see. Now I've been in poor countries where people sit at the side of the road because they're blind and they put out their hand and they keep on saying bakshish, bakshish or faisa, ba money, give me some money. And people go past and they put tiny coins into their hand or into a little handkerchief in front of them. And these people's entire life is about sitting there with their hand out saying, begging asking for the smallest amounts of money so that they themselves can feed that particular day. And it's a heart-rending sight to see, especially in some countries where people are deliberately blinded or maimed so that they have to beg. And somebody else is actually making use of them as a business. And tragically, it's not all that uncommon. But these two, they sat outside the village and as people went past, coming into the village, they would give them whatever they had, whatever they could afford to give. And that usually, for most people, would not have been very much. And then one day they hear that Jesus of Nazareth is coming down the road. And something sparks off within them. Though they cannot see, they have hearts that can see. And with the eyes of their heart, they immediately realize that this is their one and only chance. And they begin shouting and screaming and saying, Son of David, have mercy upon us. Son of David, they immediately realize that Christ is the awaited Messiah. And they follow him. They're blind, remember. They cannot see where to go, but they know where to go, and they follow after Christ. So often we ourselves are spiritually blind, but we also, thank goodness, know the direction which we need to be going. And though we might be stumbling and walking into the odd tree and probably falling in the odd ditch, we're still following directly towards Christ as much as we can. Keep going on repentant, repentantly turning towards him and calling out, Son of David, Son of God, have mercy upon me. For I know that I'm blind. I know that I'm stumbling through this world. And I know that fairly often I fall into the ditch. And up until the moment I met Christ, all I could hope for really was the odd penny out of this life. But with him, we have the spiritual riches of God himself. Those are the first two. Then we have another person and group of people. This person could say nothing. He could not shout, but he could see. But this time, other people brought him to Christ. They were the ones who dragged him along, perhaps unwillingly, because according to the Bible, he had a, an evil spirit within him. And they dragged him along, and they presented him to Christ, and said, there you are, now heal him. And as we know, the Lord healed him. I was dragged into church by two friends, a bit like that. I had no willingness at all to go to church on that particular evening, when I was about 16 or so, but two friends of mine, one took me by one elbow and the other by the other elbow, and they said, we'll carry you in there if you don't go, and they pulled me into the church and I heard the gospel proclaimed. My life is not the same after that. Same with this man. He was dragged before Christ, and the Lord changed his life completely. And you might be saying to yourself, well, we were promised another group of people. Who were they? Sadly, tragically, those were the other onlookers, a group of Pharisees, who far from being delighted to see two blind people healed and able to see, and one man who could not speak, 
able to glorify God with his mouth, they started to grumble and say, he is casting out demons by demons. This man does evil and makes it appear to be good. And so they grumbled and muttered against him. Very tragic. We ourselves can put ourselves in any of those camps. The first two showed faith. First of all, the faith of the two blind people sitting at the side of the road. Their faith bubbled up from within themselves. And they knew that the one big thing they had to do in their life was present themselves blind before Christ. And they were healed. The other one, it was his friends and family. They were the ones who had the faith. They were the ones who knew that they had to present their friend to Christ, dumb, and now speaking. Do you see these are acts of prayer? The first two are like ourselves coming towards Christ and saying, Son of David, have mercy upon me, the sinner. The second one is like us when we bring one friend of ours towards Christ in prayer. And we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon my friend, so and so. We don't say, my friend, so and so, the sinner. Have mercy upon my friend. And we present our friend or our relative towards Christ. We can see that we did that today with these notes as we presented Kiriaki to the Lord through this particular prayer service. And we must try not to be like those other ones who when we see something good happening to somebody else, but happening not in the context that we normally see it, we must not say, oh well, that's all fake. We can see that nothing good really happened there. It's all a con trick. Where you see good happening in this world, rejoice and be glad because those people are on the side of God. Very important thing to remember. You cannot do good without allying yourself to that which is good, which is God. In the first reading also, we discover other things about faith. St. Paul was talking to people saying, out of the strength of your faith, don't upset those people whose faith is weak. And that's something else that we must do. When we see other people acting and behaving in ways that we don't normally behave, then we sit calmly and patiently and lovingly, and we don't criticize them. We might help them to come and follow what we're doing, but you must do that from alongside, not from on high, saying, you know nothing, let me show you in my pride what to do. You see what they're doing, when they ask for help, you help them along. He says, receive them. In some translations, translations, it says, welcome them. But the point is very, very important. That when we see other people struggling along the path towards Christ, it might be those blind people, it might be the, that man who is dumb. We take them by the hand. It might be somebody who cannot fast. It might be somebody who comes to you asking for help in prayer. It might be somebody rather who says to you, well, I can only really manage to go to church once in every blue moon. You take them to church in your heart. They stay at home and do what they must do. You take them to church in your heart. And do not criticize or judge them, but love them and carry them along there with you towards Christ. And as you receive the sacrament, so pray for them also. For that is what these Gospels and this reading is about today. Amen. Amen.